Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to My Movement. And here today, we are here to win the weekend by just building ourselves from the ground up. Now, parameters for the class, we just asked for about maybe about six to 10 square feet of space. Um, some water would be great uh, for intervals in between. And of course, we can go with bare feet or it's like I have we can go ahead and put on socks just for a little bit of a challenge, depending on what our surfaces we're on, okay? Um, let's go ahead and have a mat down. We'll be using it interchangeably, um, sometimes pulling it up, sometimes putting it right back down again as we kind of transition from grounded techniques to standing techniques, All right? So what we're going to do here is meet at the base of the mat in position we call Cesar. And that's with the tops of our feet to the mat. In a nice stretch of the shins and bringing our hips down towards our heels. And let's sit in a relaxed position, but upright, spine nice and tall. The feet are close together. And just with each breath, we're sinking our hips closer to our heels. And go ahead and relax the facial muscles. Relax the brow, relaxing the jaw, the cheeks, mouth even, even relaxing the eyes themselves. We can close our eyes and just be present with our breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. If we sink in a bit further, maybe adjusting our feet a bit, keeping our spine tall, shoulders slightly rounded back, head slightly tilted forward. Just allowing ourselves to be in the presence. What better indicator of our presence than our breathing? Taking away our, our vision, we may have disturbances that come into our heads, maybe externally, perhaps internally. Perhaps even things that arise from the past. Why are we here? How we're here? Or even thoughts projecting into our future. How our day is going to go. How our week has been. To how our weekend's going to be. Taking those past and present thoughts, or past and future thoughts, and coming into the present through our breath. Begin to expand the lungs. Allowing more air to come in through expanding the lungs. So we're expanding our ribs, 360 degrees. And letting go. Here we get deep in our breath. Let's find a small pause at the top which is my full inhalation. And our exhale. Find a pause at the bottom of our breath at our full exhalation, contracting the core. And again, allowing you that elasticity in the lungs. 
to fill back up with air again. Again, checking in on our posture, shoulders back, chin slightly lowered, shoulders back, palms up towards the sky, just allowing the present moment to be. We check into our other senses, our sound. Again, maybe we hear a sound of a car passing. Even it's just the sound of our internal chit chat. Allowing that moment to be, recognizing it for what it is, and letting go. Not unlike my breath, exhaling. Letting go of what no longer serves me. Now we begin to regulate our breathing. In through the nose still, and out through the mouth still. Perhaps find a challenge through our discomforts. Maybe holding this position itself is a bit of a challenge itself. We can open our eyes. And see ourselves in the space that we're in, the space that, we're, that is surrounding us. We're gonna shift the weight from our feet towards our hands, walking our hands along the mats. Again, maybe feeling the temperature change, the sensation change, just being with that as the energy shifts. Now here we're gonna go, hands beneath our shoulders, our knees beneath our hips for our cat cows. So here, I'm really intentionally drawing breath in through the nose as I bow my belly down towards the ground. Keep my arms straight, belly down, hips rotate, head goes up for my cow. Then I exhale through my mouth, hips rotating back. Really engaging my core, chin goes to my chest. And now bowing my spine up towards the sky and back down for my cow. Inhale. And exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. All the while keeping my arms straight. And I begin to expand at the shoulder blades, parting my shoulder blades, allowing more of a hollowing in my chest. Now as I go along, I wanna get down to the base of my spine as well. I'm gonna really rotate my hips back, 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 tucking in my lower core. Keep it all my spine bowing up towards the sky. I'm gonna check in on my base as well. Hands flat to the mat, fingers evenly splayed. I like to leave my middle finger pointing straight ahead and the other four digits splay evenly apart from the middle. And again, any thoughts that should happen to come into my space, past, future, just stay in the moment. With all of our abilities, all that we're doing, coming to this present moment through our breath. 
Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Really finding that fluidity in the spinal column. And time. Here, going back to neutral. In my spine, I'm gonna walk. I just sit my hips back towards my heels. Again, flattening my feet down towards the ground. I'm going to widen my knees, wider than hips width apart, just enough to fit my chest in between my thighs as I walk my fingers forward for my child's pose. I'm relaxing my head. Head comes down towards the ground, really relax. Walk the fingers forward, but still try and keep the hips connected with the heels. Elongating the spine. Vision down towards the mat. Now from here, we're going to roll, dive forward. So as I do, I'm gonna shift the weight from the tops of my feet to the base of my palms. Diving in a downward fashion through my low plank. Making my knees wider, I'm gonna bring my knees back in to hips width apart, pressing through the tops of my feet. I'm gonna push up and forward for our up dog, making sure all four corners of the palm is connected to the ground. So feel free to adjust yourself if you feel that your shoulders are ahead of your hands. Try and push up. Looking straight ahead, if not slightly up, my shoulders are rounded backwards. And I'm allowing my hips to sink down towards the ground, allowing gravity to work the stretch and still being mindful of my breathing. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Again, allowing whichever sensation that arises for me. Now from here, let's go ahead and push back for a down dog. So my hips rise, my head lowers, my vision down towards the mat. I try to keep on the tops of my feet for as long as I can, stretching my toes. And then I flip one by one from the top to the balls of the feet. Really clawing those toes, raising those toes off the ground to get full flexion in the toes. So push back, head in between the arms, which are straight in line with my spine. And really trying to wrap my heart with my armpits. Swipe in at the knee. Just raise the heel and drop the heel. Alternating left and right each side. Maybe even the hips get a bit of mobility through this exercise as well. Heel up, heel down. Stretching your toes and your Achilles, all the while still keeping that spiral integrity, keeping your arms straight. Hands evenly met to the mat. Nice. And now from here again, I get the slight bend in both knees. And again, I dive through. Again, flip the tops of the feet to the mat at that low plank. One, two, and exhale. Back for our up dog. Shoulders are back, my gaze is forward. And again, allowing the hips to come down towards the mat. As we build ourselves from the base up, back for our down dog. Again, staying on the tops of the feet for as long as tolerable. Trying to distinguish between discomfort and pain. If I feel pain, I come out. There's discomfort, perhaps I challenge myself a bit. to stay in a bit longer. So we tip, flip, the tops of the feet to the base of the feet. Bend both knees, heads in between the arms, which are straight in line with the spine. Really engage in the palms. You really push back, push those hips up towards the sky. Again, heel up, heel down. You ever feel we need to come out? Just lower our knees down towards the ground. We can come back to our cat cow, or we can come back into 
our Cesar. We feel the discomfort is a bit overwhelming. Okay, so now from here, we're going to dive through again. Again, my head, crown of my head, it's aiming down and the head about 45 degrees down towards the ground. So I dive through, through my low plank, flip the tops of the feet to the mat, one and two, and soar up and ahead for my up dog again. Shoulders back, gazes forward. Finding power in the present moment. Not engaged in the future. When we come out of this pose, it's allowing for the moment if we absolutely need to come out to bring our knees down to the mat. And again, let's push back for our down dog. Gaze down. Then my gaze goes to my feet. So my head goes in between my arms, which are straight and in line with my spine. Wrap the heart with the armpits. Slight bend in both knees. Now from here, I'm going to bend both knees, really engaging the balls of my feet, as now my gaze is forward. I'm just spring in the knees, looking ahead of both my hands, centralizing between them two, and we'll float into a low squat. My feet land just outside of my hands, I press my palms together, postures upright. Now adjust my position here. You can keep yours. Feet are about slightly wider than his foot apart, toes point out 45 degrees from center. Again, I'm pressing my palms together. And keeping my hips low down towards the mat. Posture's upright, spine straight, head slightly tilted up. And here we breathe. Yeah, we can close our eyes. And again, just be with the moments, be with any discomfort. If you need to come out, feel free to bring the hands forward. This feels off of the ground. But again, giving ourselves a challenge to stay in, perhaps even sinking in a little bit deeper. And my elbows in between my thighs as I press my palms together. Get more engaged in the flexibility of my adductors, my groin. Posture up. Nice, feet evenly met towards the ground. Nice, now from here, I'm gonna walk my feet wider, release my hands, and begin to walk my feet wider. Elbows in between the thighs, still, still actively engaged in my adductors, shifting my weight from left to right. Keeping my heel down on the ground to further stretch the Achilles, the calf, so I shift my weight from side to side, but still engage in my thighs. Again, being with the moment, engage in my core, not compromise at all in my structure, posture upright. Nice. And then now from here, what I'm going to do is keep more of my weight onto my right side. My right heel raises off the ground as my left leg begins to stretch more. Left foot points up towards the sky, toes up, and my foot is flexed. Nice, keep it engaged in that thigh, so you stay in and here. We're getting more into the visual, right? Perhaps we can even close our eyes and just take the instruction. As we continue to breathe, 
in through the nose and out through the mouth. Engaging the thigh, not to here. We're going to raise and shift the weight from one leg to the other. We can't do that on our own. Allow your hands to course along the ground. Just walking your weight from one side to the other, but all the while, again, I'm keeping my posture as upright as I can. Spine straight, posture's upright. Keep that foot flexed. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Arms inside my thighs. Perhaps I'll even push my knee out on my bent leg just a bit. Noticing my heels off the ground. Heel met towards my sit bone. Okay, from here we switch to the other side. Again, lifting my heel off of the ground. As I shift in that direction, right, I can use the aid of my hands to go in that position, okay? This time I'm rotating internally in my thigh. So here, inner foot to the ground, posture's upright. And breathe. If at any moment, right, you can find that extra challenge in closing the eyes, and just sitting in to the moment. Presenting ourselves with our breath. Find the strength in doing so. And switch. Let's stop from here, inner foot to the ground. Posture stays upright. Again, arms on the inside of the thigh. And stretching both adductors just in a different fashion. Excellent. And from here we switch. Here we're going to go into a lunge. Both my toes pivot towards my right. As my direction goes towards my right, both arms are in, on the outs, inside of my leg. Right? Both arms inside the leg on the same level. I begin to walk my feet up as much as I can while still keeping my hips neutral. Okay? I don't want my feet in alignment. I want lateral space between my feet, although one is vertically ahead of the other. It's up, it's down. Pressing through the ground from all four corners of the hand. And now we twist by lifting the right hand off the ground. And twisting across our body, looking up toward the sky. Find that exhalation, that twist in our exhalation. The exhalation with our twist. And from here, we put the hand back down to the ground, even shoulders. And again, we walk the hands to the opposite side, pivoting the feet. And again, just making sure there's lateral space between the feet. So if you feel your feet are in alignment, just shift one foot more, your left foot more to your left, or your right foot more to your right. But still staying within your hips width apart with both feet. My head is up, my hips are down. Arms are straight. And it's going to walk that lead foot ahead of the hands to test the range of our stretch. Right hip coming down towards the ground. In the world, I walk my left foot forward. I engage my hamstring, my glutes, my left side, front of my hip on my right side. Now, from here, pressing into the ground with my right, I lift my left hand off of the ground and I rotate, shoulders stacked. Pointing straight up towards the sky. Trying my best to look straight up to the sky as well. Keeping both arms as straight as I can. Shoulders engaged. One more breath. Sinking deeper into that twist. Nice. Now my hands come down towards the ground. And I'm going to walk myself towards my center. Okay. Here I dive through. I'm going to allow myself to come into my split for as, as much space as I can. Just testing my range a bit. And then here, just you know, looking into our screen to get a good check in on ourselves, myself as well. I'm not going in too far. I'm just going to walk my hands ahead of my shoulders. I'm going to test the range of my split by diving out, not unlike my up dog. Just my feet are apart. From here, I push back, 
keep my heels connected to the ground as best I can. Sliding back into that split, but if it's too much, I dive out again, releasing the tension. Inhale back, test the range of your split, and exhale out. And up. Inhale back, dive through, exhale, forward and up. Two more. And from here, we're going to inhale, draw ourselves back, hips in the same line as our feet. And I'm gonna walk my hands to my right side as my right foot rises. <sighs> Left inner foot stays down. And then I switch. So my right foot lowers, and I walk my hands to my left. My left foot rises. Bring my left hand behind my leg best I can. Nice. From here, let's walk ourselves back to center. Perhaps my palms are tented. I'm gonna walk my feet back to center so I can heel toe, pivot at my heel, pivot at my toe until I come to that upright position. Heel toe, heel toe. So my feet meet at center, going to my rag doll here, maybe keeping a slight bend in the knee. Let the head and arms hang really heavy. From here, I rotate to the base of my spine first, so that's at my hips. Keep my arms and head really heavy. Still consciously allowing the breath to feel your movement. Head still hangs heavy. So I stack one spinal vertebrae atop the other. From here I'm lowering down to my knees so you can see my upper body, but you stay standing. Right. So here, I'm really raising my arms up towards the sky. You can interlace the fingers, press the palms up, I'm pressing my palms outside, but up towards the sky. I'll keep my head in between my arms. Maybe coming out of the back bend, but coming straight up. Posture upright, my gaze straight ahead and in between my arms. As I let the fingers come down, hands down, arms down, towards my side. Okay. Here we're gonna go ahead and grab a sip of water. We're coming back to our yoga mats, just a few seconds. Now, We've been in our standing position here. Now, what we're going to do is go from standing to a lower position again. So I want to bring my feet even wider than hips width apart from here. Okay, and I'm going to keep the camera base more so on my lower body for now. Feet really wide. I'm going to bring my hands to my head and my arms to my body. What I want to remember is the A frame in front and B frame off to the side. My arms are like the letter B off to the side, my elbows pointing straight down. My hands are at my head, okay? So from here, I'm gonna engage, <clears throat> excuse me, in my legs. How do we lift with our legs? That's where our exertion comes from the ground and throughout. So lowering down, keep my posture as upright as I can. Right then, I begin to fold forward. I lower my hand down towards the ground. One hand at a time, so in this case, be in my right. I'm going to raise my right foot off the ground. So the only thing that's left on the ground is my right hand and my left foot. Keep it really engaged in my core. I'm going to pivot on my left 
pointing my foot towards where I'm going to kick through. Notice here, shoulders are engaged and above the wrist. And I inhale as I draw it back in. Spin my hand out to keep the space between my target and myself as I rotate my foot back. And I place my hips back down towards the ground to stand effectively again. My gaze is in the direction in which I'm extending my objects here, right? My weapons. So I bring my hand back to my head. As I rise up, both hands back to my head. Then I go to the opposite side, bending in my legs, engage in my core, lowering down, right hand, right hand stays up, left hand down. I raise my left foot off of the ground and through pivoting, it can be either in my heel or in the ball of my foot. As I pivot, depending, <clears throat> depending on how much space I need to come in an upright position, I'm gonna pivot in my heel. And there I kick through in the direction in which my toes are pointed, exhale. Again, not really driving myself too far forward, okay? My space is gonna stay within my parameters here, right? I don't want to try and relocate, right? And compromising my base, okay? My heel begins to come off of the ground on my base leg, right? I want that heel on the ground. Again, my shoulder's still stacked above my wrist. Hands to my head for protection. For the meantime, still keeping a slight bend in my knee to allow room for for energy to shoot forward. Now from here, I begin to raise up, pivot in the foot again, extend the hand as I draw the leg back in. And then from here, again, hands to my head as I rise up. Okay, you do the same thing again. Right hand down, bend the legs, make contact, engage the core, lift the right foot and kick through into my opposite side. Even again, the slight bend in my knee to allow more room to propel forward. Now inhale back in. Still pushing my hand out, looking in the direction in which my hands extended while I turn my hips down towards the ground and make it easier for myself to base. Exhale up. <clears throat> okay. Inhale down. Exhale. Kick. Inhale back in. So extend the arm. And exhale up. Hands to the head. Arms to the body. Now here we can pick up the speed just a bit but not losing the formula, which my breath is related to my movement. Inhale, exhale, rotate the foot. Foot points in the direction which my other foot is projecting. the while. Now we've gotten the breathing down pat, right? Really being present on our posture. All right, so here not really leaning too far forward, making sure the shoulders above the wrist. Retract and extend and rise. And of course, all the while, I'm looking for my particular version of this particular move. My dimensions won't be the same as your dimensions. But it's keeping those base concepts, keeping the hand beneath the shoulder. So we start that way as we lower down. Inhale. 
hands beneath the shoulder. I'm not taking too far ahead to where I'm compromising my base. Inhale. Again, find the presence in our vision as well. Making sure that we're also not getting ahead of ourselves. Getting into one move before the other. I want to look towards where I'm extending my weapons. Even as I retract my first, I'm extending my second looking in the direction in which I'm extending. Keep an engaged in the core. Never compromising my base. We're trying to look the part. Or to get in more reps, more repetitions. Should focus on getting a few really good reps that are good for myself, my base, my core. And then from there, we can extend into quicker reps. This is our standing base. How we stand from a low position. Raise the hips off the ground. Kick forward. And base again. And that is time. Okay, let's go ahead and grab ourselves a quick sip of water, leaving our yoga mats down for now. This time we'll come back sitting. Okay, so let's uh, position ourselves to the center of the mat here, where we can bring ourselves naturally to a supine position, or just my chest, my front body facing up, lying down on my back. So here, bend the legs. I'm gonna bring my hand up, you know, maybe a little below center of the mat. So here, when I kick through, I'm gonna lower myself down towards the mat. Bend my arms, bend my hips down. And then from here, I straighten both legs. As I lay down onto my back, you can even find the moment in Shavasana, right? Just palms up. Now from here, I rise up the same way I went down. Okay, so an easier way to do it, I'm gonna do it in the direction in which it's facing the screen first. I'm gonna rise up, base onto my near side elbow. Use that to rise up. And as I rise up again, okay, I'm gonna bring my opposite foot up. Okay, so I'm opposite elbow, opposite foot. I'm going to reinforce that elbow now to get better height with my hands. Okay, now here's whichever feels comfortable. Okay, I relatively want to keep my shoulder above my wrist. Okay, but for some of us, maybe we don't have that mobility. Maybe we want to start a little bit wider. Okay, find your base through your movement, right? But just keeping in mind shoulder engagement as we go along. If anything feels uncomfortable, we can always come right back down to our hip. All right. So from here, I'm just gonna go up the opposite, um, same way that I went, just so you can see it better. So I rise up, hand to my head, hand down towards the ground. And here I raise up. And then back down again, hand down, kick through, leg comes down, 
other leg extends. Right here, I come onto my elbow. And then down towards my back. Again, I can lay in Shavasana, palms facing up. So here, as I complete my move, I'm going to bring my palms down towards the ground. Okay, going to the opposite side. Face onto my elbow. And my opposite foot. My hips already begin to externally rotate. So my toe and heel are facing east to west on my straight leg. Right. See that rotation here? That's where I want to be when I kick. Since my leg is already extended, I keep a slight bend in my knee. I replace my elbow with my hands for a more upright position. Opposite hands to my head for protection. And I rise up. And again, I pivot, extend, coming back to that standing position. Okay, let's complete this just a few times, all the way down towards that back. Same side goes down, this went up. Bend the legs, face, kick through. Lowering down, hip first, bend my elbow. And then I recenter myself, back down, legs down, hands down. Opposite side, go from palms up, palms facing down to allow more propulsion from the ground. I turn onto my side. My hands could be out at about a, maybe a 45 degree angle for a better base. So I raise up. Okay, and I raise up. Notice my elbow did shift as I rise up. Just get a bit better of a base. Okay, now opposite foot, bases, knee above my ankle, more upright posture, hand beneath my shoulder, opposite hand to my head, I rise up, extends as I draw my leg back in, and again I rise, same thing back down, hands to my head, arms to my body for protection in my standing position, bend the legs, down, kick, and my Foot, my leg still externally rotated. The indicator here is my knee pointing in that direction. I just lower the edge of my foot down towards the ground. Again, elbow prone. Extend the leg, palms are facing up. And the opposite side. And I can bring that arm maybe from, from my side, about a 45 degree angle. Elbow down. I turn towards my left. Here. Hand is meant to the ground as well. Opposite foot faces. And I bring my hand to where my elbow is. Hand to where my head is on my opposite side. I raise up, engage, heel and toe facing east west. And I extend my arm as I retract my leg. Find an exhalation through the propulsion of my movement. Okay, now we. Increase the frequency, not changing our base or the coordination with our breathing and our movements. Down, touch, kick. Again, I rotate some where my base toes are facing the direction in which I'm kicking. Lower down on my hip, elbow, back. I straighten my leg out to prone, opposite side. Okay, turning. Okay. Here's I rise up, really twisting my spine just a bit, not coming straight up into a sit up where I don't have a lot of defense for my position here. So here, off the center line. Here, face up, face, hand beneath the shoulder, rise up, kick through, and as I retract. Notice the rotation in my foot through my heels. I rise back up again. Okay, do this a few more times. Come back down the same way. It lowers and will increase the frequency a bit. Off the side.
and time. Time. Okay, let's go ahead and grab a sip of water. We'll meet again with the mat in the same place again as we come back. Okay, from here, we keep our yoga mats down. I just want to position my camera upwards so you can see me better. You can do the same. Your vision is a little bit narrower. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am kicking through with each leg. So I want to start first with a, a balance drill, I'm bringing my hands to my head and my arms to my body. I want to engage in my core by drawing this. Bit of a cobra hood, if you will, right? Not too different than my cat position when I was bowing my back up towards the sky and really getting that posterior tilt in my hip, okay? So anterior meaning my hips and my belly come forward. They jut out from their position. Posterior rotates in and I tend to become a straight line, okay? So here I'm engaging my core in this position here. My shoulders slightly rounded forward to protect my chin and my heart. Here I'm going to raise the left foot, making sure my feet are centered just beneath my hips. Okay, left knee into my chest. Keep my foot flex. I'm going to kick forward while leaning back. Now notice from there, as I kick forward, I lean back just to create space and allow more extension of my leg to come forward. I draw it back in and back down towards the ground. Okay, up, out, back, and down. Okay, through those four movements, I'm going to again coordinate my breathing. Okay, guess which is which. Okay, it may come a bit intuitively. So as I draw my knee into my chest, inhale. You're right. Lengthen my foot a bit more, but I still keep my toes flexed, if you will, right? Not full point in my foot, keeping my toes flexed. So I'm really trying to engage on the ball of my foot, which I pivot on, okay? So again, draw the air in, raise the leg up. Kick forward, half point. And the foot, keep up. Arms to the body, hands close to the head. Inhale back in, posture back upright, and exhale lower, up, out, in, reposture, and lower, out, in, and lower, and again along the way, I'm just being my true self, my authentic self through my movement. Not worried about or concerned with how soon I'll get better balance, when I'll see results of any sort. I embrace the process through present steam, through my breath. And then maybe you come into the realization that through my loss of balance, I eventually find better balance. Not too different than when we first started walking, right? Only here we'll try to avoid hitting the ground. <laughs> really drawn into the core to find that balance. Just a few more. Shoulders back, hips forward. Hold and draw it back in. And 
in here, though. And time may not be here. We're going to bring ourselves back down towards the mat. Or maybe we haven't left. And back to Shavasana. Here, just allowing ourselves to remain present, chin and chest. Shoulders just expand. Palms facing up. Try and get your lower back as flat to the ground as you can. Neck flat to the ground as you can. Which allows me to stay engaged in my front body. I my chin still close to my chest. In the martial position, keeping the chin protected in between the shoulders. But in this position, I'm relaxed. And letting those hips just lay out, feet just lay out, palms facing up into the nose and out through the mouth. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and draw our legs up into the sky, knees towards our ears, our back even flatter towards the ground now. I'm reaching my hands up from the inside of my feet, to where my fingers are grabbing on the outside edge of my feet. So here I'm getting back into my breathing here where I'm drawing my knees closer towards my ears, towards the ground rather. My hips come out wider. <clears throat> Excuse me, as we allow ourselves to just open up a lot of gravity and breath to work the stretch to our happy baby. Here we find what works best for us. We rock from side to side. Finding which side I didn't have the best balance on. Maybe I fall to my knee on one side. And just allowing process of discovery. I'm gonna go back and forth. Find ourselves, draw the knees back into the chest. In any position that we found that we've gotten great benefit from, we can always return to it after our session. Allow yourselves that power to be present for yourself. I'm going to turn to my side. Here I just kind of rise up into any position that's comfortable for me. And I'd like to return to my stays out position, to the tops of my feet to the mats. Again, settling in <clears throat> into my base. Again, the following, finding the power in my base. It resonates throughout. Eyes closed. Shoulders slightly rounded backwards, so tall to my spine, hips met towards my heels. Now so I can sit even wider, give myself a bit of a challenge, maybe sit to our, to our easy seat. 
the slab is splayed a little bit wider. Finding how that is for us. It's too much. We return back to Cesar with our feet just beneath us, knees close. Again, finding that presence in our breathing. Inhale, take in what serves us. And exhale, let go of what no longer serves us. Putting no judgment label on either. Finding what gives us power through our discovery. To help us win the weekend. Your body, mind, and spirit. Thank you again for joining me here on Saturday, nine o'clock. Join me again Wednesday at nine o'clock, where we go in a bit more basics through the legs and how they base in and feed the rest of the body. And again, allow yourselves to go into the weekend powerfully and sit in any position that we've gone through over any variation of that, as long as it's safe. Right. Thank you again for joining my movement. I'll see you soon. Have a great weekend.